Okay, I'm still working on the Slayer Sec Exciter project, and today I reverted back to a setup I showed in an earlier vid. That vid was called Slayer Sec with Toroid Feedback, and it's what that showed was how to uh, remove the L2 coil from the Slayer uh, Sec and move it onto a ferrite toroid ring. So it's all you do is you wind two coils uh, onto a ferrite toroid. I'm using 10 turns for the L2 and 35 turns for the continuation of the L1. And basically all you do is uh, for the L2, which is the 10 turn coil, you connect uh, one end to the positive rail, the other end goes to the collector of the transistor. With the 35 turn coil, uh, one end goes to the base of the transistor and the other end goes to the start of this large uh, L1 coil here. Now, is what that allows you to do is, first off, it uses the full length of the coil because sometimes the uh, L2 coil would be sitting about here so you're missing a few of the windings at the beginning but this way uh, you can use the full length of the coil but it also allows you to uh, uh, experiment with different shaped coils and today I'm using a, a rectangular one and uh, is what that was made from was this thing here it's a flat channel and the dimensions are 110 millimeters by 53 and it's working really, really well, and I found something with it today which I found quite remarkable, which I'll get around to showing you in a minute. But I'll just show you how it performs. Uh, this is a just neon, and uh, that light's you know anywhere near it. And these are these flicker flame bulbs lid motor uh, discovered, and uh, I really like these because they're quite hard to light. Uh, and your, your, your exciter is producing a high output if you can get one of those going and that lights really easily uh, you know from a fair distance away as well so I like those and then you've got your fluorescence this is a I think it's a 4 watt one that lights up and I'd say it lights it's about 4 inches away it starts lighting And then you've got your bigger fluorescent, which is this one here, and that lights up nice and bright. But it's what I want to show you tonight. It was an experiment I was doing with my previous coil, and it's what this is. It's a pot bottle, and it's wound with the same wire. This has got 26 gauge uh, SWG wire. It's a full roll on here, which was 250 grams. And this is just slightly under that because uh, I wound it from the start of the flat to the start to, to the end of the flat space, and I couldn't fit it all on. So that's ended up with slightly more wire on it. But is what I was trying to do was uh, basically uh, use this as a receiver, and you can see there's absolutely nothing at all coming from this coil. And it's sitting uh, really close to this one here. Now the output of this is quite amazing. I mean, it will light an LED on my Abenbenko plug from about two meters away. Uh, but there's nothing being transferred to this coil at all. Now, is what I'll do now is I'll just swap the coils and have this as the receiver and this one as the transmitter. And I'll, and I'll keep the same setup with the, uh, the toroid uh, as the L2 on this one here. Uh, and I'll just show you, you know, what a difference it makes. Uh, be back in a minute. Okay, I've swapped the coils over now. So we're using the pot bottle coil as the transmitter, and we're still using the same setup as before with the uh, L2 on a ferrite ring. And the current draw is 172 milliamps. And I forgot to mention we're running this on 12 volts. Now I'll show you this lighting the fluorescent tube. So that lights at about basically the same distance as the other coil I showed you, about four inches. And the other coil I've now moved over here, and that's sitting about one meter away. That so there's a fair gap between the two. Now, for this to work as a receiver, you have to orientate the uh, L1 output wire in a letter C shape in a vertical plane uh, towards the front of the coil, right? So it's like that in a vertical plane, and the other. Uh, wire from the L1, the bottom wire which would normally go to the base of the transistor, that goes in a letter C shape in a horizontal plane. So this one's flat and that one's vertical. Now I don't know why it has to be set up like that but if, it, if it's not set up like that it won't work. Anyway here's a, a neon lighting 
and then the flicker flame bulb and uh, I think this is a 4 watt fluorescent and the big fluorescent I just find it amazing that uh, this will fire off uh, fluorescent tubes and neons at such a distance, whereas you can only do it from four inches away uh, with the other, you know, with, with the other setup. So uh, that's what I've been working on tonight. Thanks for watching.